The house before you is a, an expansion of the original house. The uh, portico on the front was not there, and it was a, a little bit smaller version of this, and it was a stone house in the same manner as the carriage house, which you'll be seeing a little bit later. Uh, it's been renovated and is now owned by the Columbia Association and is used as a hall for a variety of celebrations. Right behind me is a, a part of the tree-lined lane, and it was one of these trees that was cut down or died, I don't know for, for sure which it was, that ended up having a stump that was approximately uh, two feet above ground. And on a given Sunday morning, uh, one of our members uh, at that point who wanted to be baptized uh, chose to have that baptism outdoors. And we conducted the baptism service by having her kneel upon the stump of this tree. And it would be about a, a couple of years later when we would come with a chainsaw. Jack Dunlavy came with his chainsaw and sawed off the top of the uh, tree stump and we took it back to the carriage house and we continue to this day to use it as one of our altars. When uh, the baptism took place, when she was kneeling and we got through with the service, we looked up into the sky and above us, and we have pictures recording this, there were two jets that had uh, crisscrossed and had created a magnificent cross in the sky and it was a, a very inspirational moment for all of us who were at that time a part of the community. The tree that we're looking at was the center of a number of picnics, uh, many committee meetings took place under here, there were several weddings. It uh, came to have a lot of memories for all of us who were involved early in the life of the community. Someone has documented that the tree is uh, several hundred years old. We're looking directly at what was the caretaker or the slave quarters uh, from that building, which was the place they prepared meals. There is an underground tunnel that goes directly into the house, and so they would prepare the meals there and go directly into the house. You will see between the house and the slave's quarters or the caretaker's quarters, a garden and in that garden again there have been several weddings that were uh, performed and a number of celebrations out there and we would have meetings there. The uh, caretaker's house at one point was the home of the Eye of the Camel. John Levering uh, had uh, his artist studio there and a place for purchasing and it became a place of gathering for many friends of the community. Uh, Wes Yamaka, who came shortly after the founding of Kitimacundi Community, joined him, and the two of them had this uh, artist uh, a studio and place for buying their many prints and works that are all over the city of Columbia. The two of them made a great impression upon our city through their art and through who they were as persons and their ability to work with people. We're looking at the entryway to the manor house now with the uh, carriage house just to our left. I wanted to comment that the flow of the land began a steady upgrading right up to the base of the building and then on the front side which we'll be seeing in a little while it uh, faded down in the same way. A part of the landscaping story here is a ch uh, complete changing of the contour of the land around the building. Uh, in the picture that was taken before any work was begun you can get a sense for that whole land flow of the road behind me all of this was uh, just kind of a gentle rolling uh, part of the landscape of Maryland. The ridges and all of the plantings here are a part of the landscape design uh, put together by land design research uh, persons. And particularly in the front side, which we'll be seeing in a moment, they cut the land back to make the parking lot below the building so that the building would not be obstructed by cars parking in front of it. It brought, a, again, a part of the beauty now we're in front of the uh, carriage house and you can see where the land again has been uh, taken away to accentuate the building itself and cars are not an obstruction to the view of the building. My first time of entering this uh, building that we now call the barn or Oliver's carriage house was in April of 1970 and at that point the, of course the land simply sloped down here and I would enter in through the uh, doors that are directly in front of me uh, those doors were not there. There were some old green doors with uh, uh, dilapidated hinges and uh, were held together by some nails and some wire. 
We'll see them, uh, we will see them later. They are now part of the uh, upstairs of our building. But I entered into that space, and when I first got in, there was a, a horse stall on my uh, left and a horse stall on my right in front of me and a horse stall on the left in front of me. A cement floor, and there was a lot of old things stored in there, and some birds came flying out. When we first began to do work in the community, we put up a plywood sign that indicated we were in the process of renovation and that we were going to be uh, working on this uh, building to be the home for Kittimacundi community. One of the early struggles in the life of the community is whether we were going to identify ourselves as a Christian community or not. And we had a long discussion and finally when we put up the original uh, sign for the development of Kittimacundi, we did put on it a Christian community, an important landmark in the uh, struggles of our community identification. It would be a number of years later when we would erect this sign and we did it in a special ceremony having blessed the uh, large piece of wood on the inside and carrying it out and dedicating it here in front. We have uh, pictures of that event. We came out and sang and had a special dedication service along with the uh, mason who did the stonework uh, that piers that hold up the sign as well as the stonework that we will be seeing in the uh, building inside for the development of the fireplaces. We are on the uh, eastern end of the building and below me here is an opening to the sewer line that goes directly out through the parking lot out to the sewer line out in the street. The reason I stop here at this very spot there was uh, a part of the work days uh, several individuals in the community and again we have still photographs of that worked long and hard to dig below the foundation of this wall to bring the sewer line out underneath the wall and that's when we began to find as we did with the water line on the other end that the wall of this building ex uh, extends uh, three and a half to four feet below the ground level all the way and in the midst of the digging you also find that there are many large stones in this ground naturally that are the stones that this building was made of so sometimes when you're digging as we did on numerous occasions you get below the foundation and right at the base of the foundation is a, another large stone which you either have to remove or find some way of working around early in the development of the community we were not as conscious and aware of the need for uh, making the building handicapped accessible uh, at one point we began to develop our building and to make it available to all persons and on one of our work days, uh, one of the tasks was to cut away the curbing and to lay and pour uh, this portion of the sidewalk that would make the uh, ramp available that uh, goes directly into uh, the community. It was a project completed well and has uh, on numerous occasions given persons in wheelchairs and other uh, persons accessibility directly from the parking lot into our building. The stalls, which are in front of me, directly behind me, is the entryway to the um, barn. These stalls were in a different configuration when we first came into this room. One was over here to my left, and one was where that one is, and one was uh, approximately where this one is. They are the original uh, stalls that were here in the building with a sliding door on them. They contain the usual steel bars that are frequently found in uh, uh, horse stalls. We kept all of the original equipment and uh, used it. It adds to the uh, originality of the barn. I want to say in regard to the floor itself, it was an interesting arrangement when we first entered into this barn when we purchased it in 72. The floor level that I am standing on now was the level of the floor in this room and then when you went into the next room the floor level was down about eight inches and then in the third room down there there was no floor at all it was simply a dirt floor so a part of the original work that we began to do in the barn was to remove um, uh, the two cement floors in uh, this area and then subsequently took the leftover cement and uh, buried it in the parking lot the end floor was a dirt floor and we simply uh, smoothed it out to create a one level floor on these uh, bottom three rooms. The heating and air conditioning uh, units are um, in the third area over there, but the way the uh, air 
and uh, heat and cooling gets here is through a tunnel system which was created underneath the cement floor which is presently here. That meant digging into the dirt and there were many times when we would run into large boulders. One in particular is found between the uh, second and third room there right in the doorway. We ran into a large stone that appeared to be at least uh, four feet in depth and was over four feet across. So in order to get the pipe for the air conditioning to lay across that, we kept chipping away at that with our rather uh, uh, old inadequate tools, but we finally won the victory and it was a major celebration because it was impossible for us to uh, remove that large stone. In the early days of uh, working on this building, there were uh, Saturdays that we would work when there would be only two or three of us with our spades and shovels and we would be working in this area digging. And then it was frequently that someone from the community would bring us some hot coffee in the winter months or something to drink in the uh, summer months. Uh, during that early period, it's uh, pretty much clear that we only missed one Saturday in the first year from Labor Day 1973 through Labor Day 1974. There were always on Saturday mornings persons here working, uh, doing a variety of tasks. Uh, the first of which I have mentioned was really the taking out of the cement and digging for the air conditioning heating ducts. The place where the fireplace presently uh, is was an open door like on to the one behind me uh, and the fireplace was built in by the uh, stonemason that we hired and the beautiful mantelpiece put up that is there of a solid log. But the part I wanted to tell about is that this door was large enough to accommodate the uh, carriages uh, and the horses and a part of what they would do at the very base of what is now the fireplace there was a small holding pool in which they would put water and as they would drive the horses and carriages into this portion of the barn the pool of water would wash the feet of the horses and would wash off the wheels of the carriages and uh, wagons that they would have here. They could do that and then simply go directly out the other door and it became simply a straight drive through. One of the fascinating stories in the development of the building was meeting the codes of the county for fire protection and so on. This beam, as you can see, the wood beam itself is very substantial, probably held tons and tons of hay and could hold more than uh, all the people that would ever be up there. But as a part of the fire regulations, we were asked to install these steel beams and there is one on either side of this beam and one on either side of the beam behind us. They are very heavy. Uh, they weigh well over 200 pounds and aligning the bolts to go straight through that uh, original wooden beam which is like stone and getting the steel beam up there, getting the holes through and then putting a steel beam on the other side was a major accomplishment. It was uh, the constant wonderment of all of us of the necessity to have uh, uh, this steel beam there when it would be n next to impossible to burn the wooden beam since it is so petrified. But it was a part of the requirements and there was much uh, work and sweat that went into that on the part of the construction people. This fireplace is also the uh, place where there are several important uh, stories to remember. The very floor on which we were standing was still dirt covered with some stones when we had the original installation for my be, uh, being the enabling minister in the community on a part-time basis and the dedication of the building. That took place in October of 73. The, there were ditches around for the heating and air conditioning uh, system, but the floor had not been cemented. In December of that year, 1973, there was still no heat in the building, but we did have our first Christmas Eve service around this fireplace. We sat here in the cold and we had candles and as there was no electricity and had our first candlelight ceremony. It's a moment that many of us remember very well uh, because of the cold and because of it being in a stable. Uh, we had some warm bread to share as the bread and wine, the Eucharist of that evening. A part of the original design for this center room was that it would be a coffee house and before us we have the plumbing that was installed for uh, a sink and there was a possibility of putting in a, a cooking unit and 
the fireplace uh, which we had been looking at uh, would be a part of this room. It would be um, chairs and a place for folk singing and so on. On a number of occasions we have accomplished that kind of a program, but it's a uh, part of the planning that went into, the thorough planning that went into this building was to make it available for all of the uses that uh, might come in the days ahead. As you can see, we've never made use of it, but should we desire to do so, uh, it's already laid out for that purpose. The meditation room, or the pillow room as it is fondly called, was a part of the development of the life of the community that came uh, later. The wall that encloses it and the door were put in uh, as we sought ways to make use of this building. Uh, it was a special project and was a part of uh, the development of many people's lives and in the consequent time has been used for much counseling, much prayer, much meditation, and has become a vital part of the life of Kittimacundi community. This is the corner of the meditation room, and it is, uh, the reason I'm showing this, the wall that is not whitewashed is where the feeding hay trough was for the sheep which last lived in this building. The slanting part of the unpainted part there is the slats through which the sheep would reach to get their hay and it ran the full length of this area of the barn and the unpainted area is sort of the top part of the uh, hay uh, holding uh, trough for the sheep to eat from. We are now on the second level of Oliver's carriage house. The floor on which uh, we are standing was the original hay mow floor uh, for the uh, building. We needed to put plywood over it so that the rug would be somewhat uh, smooth when it was put upon uh, the plywood that is below. There are an endless number of stories to tell about in this space, but I want to begin with the first impression that I had when I came into the building. The cupola directly above me, uh, which was older rotten wood at that point, we needed to replace it. But the story that I remember so clearly is that of two owls who lived up there. and. They lived there for the first several years before we began the renovation work. They did not leave until the renovation work was uh, really well in progress and they couldn't take the sound of noise and all that was going on and eventually the windows were put in and, and they could not return to their, their home. At either end of the uh, upper area, you, you can see the windows. The one to my left was the original hay door uh, there's a track that runs along the uh, peak up there th and the method of bringing hay or straw into a building like this was to bring a wagon up on that end of the barn and there was a rope and pulley system that would pull it directly up to the peak on the outside and then bring it across and would drop it uh, here on the floor in whatever part of the barn they wanted to have it. The architect in order to make the two ends alike cut the uh, far end out to uh, make it similar to the one on, the, uh, on my left. It happened in the construction that the windows and the way they were constructed took on the form of three crosses and has become an important uh, part of our attachment to the building. It was not in the mind of the designer. It was a way simply to accomplish a task, but it has taken on that kind of symbolic meaning for us. When I first came up here, the way to get up to this floor, over by my left, uh, just behind the piano was an opening in the floor and there was a ladder which you climbed up, which is typical of barns. There were, you climbed up the ladder and came in to, to the area there. The, to the far right, over along the wall, was a second entrance to the Haymow area with a ladder which you crawled up. Uh, it was the only access we had to the barn early on. One little story that happened, uh, when we dedicated the building in 1973 of October downstairs, uh, Floyd Schaefer, the clown who has been associated uh, with our community and is a personal friend of mine, came upstairs and did a part of the dedication service from up here and came down that ladder as a part of the whole uh, liturgy of that day. The fireplace which uh, we have in front of us is directly over the fireplace downstairs. It has uh, was built by the same stonemason as did the work downstairs. It was completed somewhat later as we did not have the original funds to uh, 
create the upstairs at the same time. The b barn was completed in two phases. Again, it has the mantle, and we had discussion about the kind of mortar and the depth of the mortar in between, as we did have discussions about many things. I want to look at the uh, beam over here that comes uh, down to support the roof. The interesting little sidelight about the early construction of this building. When we bought the building, the beam was uh, right where I am standing now, and it was not over the uh, beam, supporting beam below. It was simply sitting on a, a board of the floor, and it was sagging. And when we saw that, the uh, construction persons uh, removed it from here and put it in its proper place over the supporting beam downstairs. You still can see the cutoff nails there, but they used the original uh, piece, and it uh, is now fully functioning as a supporting uh, post, uh, but it, it is in its proper place. I want us to uh, look along the wall on the front side here now uh, and say a little bit about the original construction of this building. The black line which you see going along the stones there was the original roof line of the original portion of this building. There was a second construction of this building and I will show you where the walls were, but it basically consisted of the area that is uh, indicated by the black tar from the roof. The curving stones above it were uh, the false front with a flat roof and it, so the center third of this building had a flat roof and was of that size. At some later date, we do not know, it really became a building 300 percent larger as they added on the either end and raised the roof to um, a greater height. Over here, uh, part of the reason we know that behind these chairs and in each of the corners of the center third, when we purchased the building, a wall came out at this height, this height and this width to approximately this point. It was on all four corners and was the supporting wall for the outside of this flat roof. We had to knock all of the stones out of this wall and in each of the other three corners and we hauled it out to out of the window to my left and it became a part of the stone that was used to uh, build the fireplace. Just a word about the roof, probably one of the greater discussions we had in the process of the development of the building. We had to create an insulated roof in some form since it is a tin roof and uh, creates a great deal of heat. One of the options was to put the insulation on the inside. The other option was to put it on the outside. It finally came down to the fact that the price was not that much different and that helped to make the decision, but early on we thought it would be more costly. We did put a insulation of four inches on top of the old tin roof which was leaking and then put a new roof over it and it consequently added a great deal to the building as we can see when you look at the inside you see uh, replacement boards, bo boards of a variety of sizes and shapes and colors and it maintains the character of the interior of the hayloft of this carriage house. There have been other barns developed where this was covered over and the insulation put on in the inside and it loses some of its original style. On the beams themselves you can tell that birds lived here. Uh, again we had some discussion about uh, leaving some of the remains of the birds there. Uh, we decided to leave some of that there because it helps it to uh, continue to be the barn that it was a place of uh, specialness and, and uniqueness. The construction itself is uh, fascinating. Right above my uh, hand here you can see a mitered uh, effect of a beam and there are bolts that go through. All of this wood in this building has reached such a point in its age that it's next to impossible even to put a thumbtack when decorating is done here. It's very difficult to put anything. We have a few leftover staples from some decoration uh, for an event, but it's very difficult to put anything into the wood. It is uh, uh, petrified to uh, such a nature. Just in terms of some construction things, the uh, air conditioning heating ducts um, by the architect were built in in such a way that they would be um, 
very much uh, out of the way, would not be noticed, and does accomplish the task of heating this room and uh, cooling it in the summertime. I want to return to the hay track. The hay track assembly, which we can see over here in front of us, was the uh, rolling part of the hay track that would come across and then the hay would be left down. We even to this day continue to make use of that. It's a, something we can roll into the center of the room or to some place and have hung some of our larger celebration banners from the uh, peak of the roof uh, via that mechanism. The foreman of the construction crew, uh, whose name was Al, uh, was 65 years old when he began the renovation project here on the upper floor of the barn. Throughout his career, he had often wanted to make a stairs that was uh, what I call a tongue and groove, uh, and this was his uh, major piece and the part that he fell in love with. It's a unique creation. There are no nails in it. It's simply the wood is slid into the uh, beams that hold it and it is a magnificent piece of work and he felt very proud and rightly so about the development of these stairs. It can be used many times and not see the uh, expert workmanship that went into the development of these stairs to the balcony uh, above. The door that I have in my hand is the uh, door that was originally on the front of the building. Uh, the strap here was a part of the original strap we saved all of these doors and it serves as a moving panel to cut off and to separate this part of the room. Uh, the track was also a part of the original track that was used uh, downstairs in the stall area. In any barn for the purpose of curing hay, uh, there are louvers necessary to allow the uh, free flow of air. The one window that we're now looking at, there are eight of them in the building was that very thing. It was not a window when we purchased the uh, barn. We removed the uh, louvers that allowed the free air and replaced them with windows. The three cupolas at the top of the building are the same. They were louvered to allow the air to flow through the uh, haymow area and each of them has been replaced by windows. On Easter of 1977, we completed the building and then came the letdown that happens after any major renovation or building project. What do we do next? We needed a place for storage and so the shed, as it has become lovingly known, became a uh, working project for those of us who had been working on the building. Uh, rather elaborate plans were drawn up and the construction began. Some persons uh, who had not had a chance to work in a barn came and joined us and there was a lot of love and labor that went into this uh, rather elaborate uh, shed. It's probably one of the few sheds that has a turned tin roof on it. Again, a part of uh, the story of our community. It's a roof that matches the roof on the barn, uh, a story unto itself, uh, but it has become the uh, place where all of our gardening and uh, mowers and other uh, equipment is uh, housed at the present time. In front of us here is the uh, one of the relics that we inherited when we first entered into the barn. It was a workbench for some sort of industry. When we originally got the uh, uh, table it was probably twice as long as the present one. Uh, early on in our barn work days we would have, uh, after a long day of work, we would have uh, steam crabs and beer and this became the table on which uh, those crabs were always laid out and we would eat. Finally the boards got so rotten that they needed to be replaced and the table was uh, subsequently shortened a bit because it was easier to handle. Uh, its old form was very difficult to move when you wanted to mow the lawn. One little interesting anecdote about the parking lot itself, about right in the center of the parking lot uh, if one were to dig down about uh, 12 feet, you would find a great deal of the concrete buried and we didn't have any place to dispose of it. So John Elder, who was the one who brought us a part of the equipment that we worked with, uh, took his uh, caterpillar digger and just simply dug a big hole and we carried all of that concrete out there and just poured it in and then put dirt over top of it. Uh, someday if uh, there's an archaeological dig, they'll wonder what that's all about uh, being right there 
in a pile uh, in a place that makes no sense at all. It was simply a convenient uh, dumping ground for that concrete.